の死の根性Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about how to build Kurtish. I think that's how you pronounce it, at least from, from according to Google research. Kurtish is in Dark and Tensei faction, and he is mainly an AoE caster. Now let's compare both of his classes when it's in level 70 max stats. Wizard is a mage. And then Lord of Death is Demon. As usual, Demon has everything a little bit better in terms of stats. However, we'll get countered by the Holy. Talent, Soul Stealing Painter. There are a few parts to this talent, so bear with me. Before ending action, you may use an additional skill, Soul Trace. Apply Soul Seal to a non-summon enemy. Non-summon enemy means anyone who's a real character, but not someone you summon with your skill. Whoever has this seal, soul seal, damage dealt to Kurtish will minus 20% last two turns. Cannot be dispelled or immunized. First thing you need to understand is that soul seal is not a debuff. It's like a mark. It's just a talent such as Sigma's 3C, Ranger's Eye. That's first part. Second part, when battling against units of that enemy's class type, in is increased by 20, 25, 30, 40% at 6 stars, which means whoever you mark the um, soul seal on, let's say you apply on a flyer, whoever is a flyer on the enemy's team, Kurdish in will increase against them. So that's first part about soul seal. So the second part is Soul Fragment. Deal AoE damage to one enemy with Soul Seal. So whoever has Soul Seal applied, this AoE damage will only apply to whoever has the mark. If the enemy is killed this way, summon a Painted Puppet. Okay, when this unit dies, summon a Painted Puppet. Painted Puppets inherit the stats of the deceased unit, which means the puppet will be the same stats of Kurdish before he died. If in a non-arena mode, which means if it's not in PvP mode, the stats are capped to 150% of Kurdish stats. There can be a maximum of two enemy hero Painted Puppets at any time. Painted Puppet skills, Soul Breaking Omen, passive, at active attacks ignore guard and will attack first. Song of Death, passive, after taking action, decrease one random stat of enemies within two blocks by 20%. Last one turn. Pretty much like Gizaroth, if you kill Gizaroth, you still have to deal with his um, robot. Bonding requirement, fourth and fifth bond, you need licorice and passier's help to unlock. Thank God this hero only has 3 plus 3C, so 4 exclusive skills, so it doesn't take a long time to make this guide. The first skill I'm going to talk about is Disguise. Cost 1 cooldown, 3 range all span single. This is probably his core skill, either in PvE or PvP. What it does is it's an assist, target one other ally, converts this hero's type to that of the target, what the hell? Okay. To that of the target hero, that's really bad, the translation I think. Last two turns. After use, may move three blocks and attack. When using this skill, buffs will not decrease in duration. What this pretty much means is that you can transform your class into a ally class that you wish to target. For example, you are in a demon class and you have to fight against a holy unit and holy enemy and then you have a holy ally so you're going to target that ally and you turn yourself into a holy unit and after that you can move three blocks and attack next we have soul engrave cost two cooldown five range three span four magic damage attack enemies in range for 0 0.35 times aoe damage inflict one random debuff and inflict non-summon enemies with soul seal last two turns. Also steals one random buff. Soul Seal cannot be immunized or dispelled. Very straightforward. Soul Scream. Cost 2, cooldown 2, range 2, span single. Magic damage. Attacks a single enemy, dealing 1.5 times damage. On enemies with Soul Seal, ignore 15% magic defense and after battle resource 50% of damage dealt as HP. 
If defeating an enemy with Soul Seal, summon a Painted Puppet at the enemy's location. So if you kill someone with this skill who has the Soul Seal, they will turn into a Painted Puppet. Remember the talent it says you cannot have more than two Painted Puppet, which means if you kill more than two, you can have two. But if he dies, I don't think you'll get a third one, is what it means. Or if you kill more than one, you still only get one, and when you die, you'll become the second puppet. Okay, Awakening Skill, Soul Freeze Elegy, cost 3 cooldown 5, range self, span 5. Attacks enemies in range 4, 0.35 times daily damage, and inflict 2 random debuffs. For every enemy hit, restore 20% HP. For every enemy with Soul Seal killed by this unit, summon a Painted Puppet at the enemy position. Straightforward, it feels like a stronger version of Soul Engrave. Recommend a weapon time. Uh, I said it before, he's an AoE damage dealer, so I think Miracle Staff is probably the best. But if you feel like you use both and you want to have a little bit more survivability, then you use Rent Moon. If you would like him to be a single target damage dealer, Scepter of Divinity is still very good, especially with his talent with Soul Bear, he can deal extra 40% in on a Soul Seal marked enemy. Recommended chess piece, we have Tenyo, still the best. If you're not using single target uh, Kurtish, you don't have to use the Nebulous Robe. And if you want more healing, because he has a lot of skill, especially his 3C, where he can restore his HP, then you can use the Twilight Guard for more healing. Okay, recommend the helmet. Uh, Tenyo, I still think it's one of the best in the game for Mage or Demon. Especially if you use his move against skill in PvP, you have a chance to apply the buff to two units. Glory of the World is also a very good choice if you want him to be a little bit tankier. There are chances that he's going to use mixed troops. I'll explain that in later of this guide. And Soul Stealer Headdress. Um, if you want him to be a debuffer, and again, if you use his act against skill, you have, a, you have two chances to apply a silence to an enemy, or more than one enemy. Okay, recommend accessories. There are tons of accessory, and it really depends on your playstyle. But for myself, I would use these three. Fedar Rose, after an AoE attack, you have a chance to dispel one buff to every target that you attack. And Dimensional Jewel because you're, you pretty much just want to spam your skill, so it's a really good accessory to have. And then last but not least, I recommend Juggler Plushy just because you can increase an additional turn for Disguise. Enchant choices. I only recommend two. Well, honestly, you can use three if you want, but the first one, Clock, if you want to just spam his skills, then Clock. If you do PvE, I would say Magic for the maximum damage and Breeze for movement. Enchant stats for gear, for Mastery Stone and Arena PvP Stone, I would say the party is always in and then HP. And then the rest is up to you guys. You can go defense or magic defense. Like crit and suffer doesn't really, you know, is not really valuable using it on him. So preference, all preference. Okay, soldier choices. These two are the most obvious. So if you're fighting against a lot of mages, you want to use sorceress. If you want to deal more damage, use sorceress. And if you're facing physical attackers, you want to use crystal warlock, but you lose a little bit of that damage. And last but not least, I suggest Lava Titan if you want to be super tanky against physical damage dealers. With its move against skill, you have a chance to apply two of the fixed damage. Alright everyone, the guy finishes here. I hope you guys had a better understanding about how to build and use this character. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.